In today's episode, a passenger on a cruise ship vacation unknowingly decides to go swimming in shark-infested waters around a small island near Australia. No one warned him that he was about to go swimming where a shark had already eaten a woman alive just a week before, and where the locals dumped food into the water to show tourists sharks. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying shark attack on Chris Davies. Welcome to Final Affliction. To some, a cruise is a peak of travel comfort and the ultimate experience that everyone should have. With the chance to see the world and bring all of your home comforts along for the ride with karaoke, cocktails, and shows available every day. You are treated like a VIP every minute that you're on board and can easily see some new countries and cultures along the way. It can be the ideal experience, but the problem on a cruise ship is when it comes to safety. While the locals know all the problems and the things to look out for in their town, the constant flow of tourists are oblivious. This can lead to people getting lost, eating the wrong food, or, in the worst cases, death. If there have been sharks in the area recently, the locals won't swim there because they would have heard through word of mouth, a luxury that is not afforded to most travelers. Unfortunately, this is what happened to Chris Davies on his tour to Sydney when he came closer to the local wildlife than he ever could have wished. 59-year-old Chris Davies had been enjoying his cruise so far. He had boarded in Melbourne onto the Grand Princess cruise liner with 3,000 other people as they explored the Fiji Islands and headed to New Caledonia, an island off of Australia. He had enjoyed the last nine days immensely, soaking up the sun and relaxation that came with a five-star holiday. He was a very active man, regularly competing in triathlons for years and finding new ways to keep healthy as he headed towards retirement. He had represented Australia several times at World Championship events and was well known in his hometown as a very devoted and determined man. Back home, he had a wife and three children whom he loved dearly, and although he was enjoying his holiday, he was excited to return home to see them again. Before he was able to travel full-time, he was still working as a software programming consultant in Sydney, a job that took up a great deal of his time but it made his relaxation time even more precious. He was very excited for his next destination, where he hoped to swim in the clear waters and snorkel along the coral reefs to see what the underwater world would hold for him. Unbeknownst to him, there was much more waiting under those waves than just colorful fish and coral. Once the ship reached the shore, Chris quickly disembarked and went to explore the beaches close to the port. He always enjoyed getting his bearings before he headed off on his adventures. It made him feel much safer rather than aimlessly wandering around. He managed to find a local restaurant where he could try some of the local food and then went to the Chateau Royal Beach with amazing views across the whole bay. As he arrived, the sun was gradually getting lower and there were lots of people taking advantage of the cooler temperature of the evening by swimming in the sea. Chris decided he would join them and have a late swim before he headed back to the boat for dinner. He set his things down and walked out into the water, choosing to stay close to the pontoon as there were more fish for him to see there. He swam around the jetty for a little while, diving down to watch the fish, but remaining close enough to shore that he could still see his things. He was wary of someone stealing his bag as he was in a new area and didn't know what the people were like. He was, however, worrying about the wrong thing. There was nothing on land that would cause him harm. It was the animal that was swimming right towards him that he would never see coming. At 4 p.m., Chris thought about returning to the shore as he was getting tired from his day of traveling. As he was debating his next plan, he was pulled under the waves with a strong grip on his leg. He was dragged further from the shore and he could feel the water getting colder, so he knew that he was somehow in deeper water. The grip on his leg loosened, but he wasn't safe yet. As he surfaced, he looked around for what had just attacked him and saw a four-meter tiger shark charging towards him. 
He put his hands out in front of him in defense, hoping to push the shark away from him or at least provide some kind of protective barrier for the rest of his body. There was no protection to be given. The shark approached quickly and, as Chris tried to push it away, the fish bit off both of his hands in one swift motion. The pain was indescribable, and he screamed out for help as the animal continued to bite and shake him. There was nothing he could have done to defend himself, and now, with blood pouring from his hands and thigh, he began to feel weak and nauseous. The shark pulled him under the waves once again and shook him violently, his blood filling the water and fueling the shark to become even more violent. His screams had attracted attention from the shore, and he could hear them organizing his rescue. But deep down, he knew it would be too late. As he felt the shark bite into his body once again, the pain was minimal as he began to lose consciousness. From the shore, lifeguards heard Chris's screams and knew something was wrong. A shark attack had happened just a couple weeks previous, so they had been on high alert for another, and it seemed today was that day. They ran to their jet skis and charged into the water to where they could see Chris surrounded in blood. He wasn't moving, but they didn't want to pass any judgment on his condition until they pulled him from the water. When they brought him back to shore, a number of civilians swarmed around the scene to administer first aid while they waited for the emergency services to arrive. They were surprised that he was even still alive, but they intended to keep it that way. They were shocked to see the man without any hands as well as a bite along his thigh that was nearly 40 centimeters long. The idea that they were swimming next to such a massive predator sent shivers down their spines. His blood was still openly flowing from his wounds and soaking deep into the sand. They didn't even think it was possible for a man to bleed so much, but they knew that from the injuries he had just sustained, it was unlikely that he would survive. Even if he did, he would have horrifying disfigurements that would change the rest of his life. He would need help doing regular activities and would most likely never compete as a triathlete again. Even so, they put all of their efforts into saving the man bleeding in front of them, hoping against hope that they would keep him alive. They continued with their CPR efforts for 40 minutes, desperately hoping that they would be able to save him. But unfortunately, it was too late. Chris Davies died from his extensive injuries at around 5 p.m. After Chris's body was collected, an investigation was launched into how this could have happened. The beach was not supposed to have been reopened so soon after the last attack, as they hadn't been able to prove that the beach was safe yet. Sadly for the tourists, they had no idea about this and were not stopped from going into the water, which is why Chris was able to be attacked. Locals also knew that the jetty where he was swimming was popular with sharks, as staff members from the hotel would throw food in for the fish to show their guests. Following the attack, they closed the beach again to ensure that no one would be able to put themselves at risk, and a shark culling was put into effect. Fishermen began their search and managed to catch two sharks that they believe were most likely to be the culprits of the attack. During the necropsy of the animals, one shark was found to have the left and right hands of Chris Davies within its stomach, along with fragments of his swimwear. This proved without a doubt that they had caught the animal responsible, and so they told the public that the killer shark was dead. Upon further inspection, they also believed that the same shark was most likely the one that attacked the woman a few weeks previously, meaning it had gotten a taste for human flesh. Luckily for everyone else who would travel to the beach later, the threat of meeting their final affliction by the jaws of a man-eating shark was gone.